Welcome to the Wicked Gamer and Collector. Welcome back, Wicked family. So in today's video, we are going to take a close look at the Wikipad, or the Nintendo clone, or fake Nintendo Switch, or prototype of the Nintendo Switch. Nevertheless, it looks like a Nintendo Switch because it has a similar idea. Interchangeable controller. We designed the controller to feel great in your hands, or that's what the description says. So that's something we're going to find out. Power by Nvidia Tegra. So it's pretty powerful for back at the day. And the reason why I'm saying back it today, because this is already a very old product. This 7 inch tablet, you can combine it with the controller that comes with it. And combined, the idea basically the same like Nintendo Switch, you can enjoy some games. You can play a lot of great games from Android Store. And you can also play some retro games on the device. I am always looking to search for some new hardware to review here on the channel to find the perfect product for you. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and become one of the Wicked family and don't miss out any videos in the future. Simply by subscribing, hitting the bell. All right, so let's do a little bit of unboxing because I just wanted to show you first the box and what are we going to find within it. So I really love the presentation of the Wikipad. It comes in this very nice quality box so that you slide out here. What you're doing here is the decal of the product itself. When opening up the presentation is pretty damn cool here we have the tablet itself as you can see it's got a nice screen protector here we have some information at the back and the decal of the wiki pad we're going to do a little scroll over what you're going to get with this let's see what we have more in the package all right let's see let's remove this a little piece of paper it comes with a very basic manual and Thing to clean your tablet with I mean, micro USB cable, charger, an adapter, and the control unit itself. All right, so the reason why I call this thing the Nintendo Switch prototype because the idea behind it is exactly the same. We're having this tablet that clicks into this control unit or controller, how you want to put it. Only thing is, this thing is pretty damn clunky. And let's take a close look at the controls. So at the left side we are finding a D-pad, analog stick, and return button or select button. And if you feel the joystick, it's very loose. The D-pad is very stiff. And the button feels pretty decent. Right side we are finding five buttons and an analog stick. And like with the other side, if you touch the buttons, they feel pretty decent. But the analog stock is very loose. So that brings us to the back buttons and the air one, that we're just going to call it, feels quite stiff. Don't know if this is going to be very comfortable when playing. But the trigger is really cool, similar to the PlayStation controller. So that is pretty cool. So for shooters, mm, looks nice. Right, the moment of truth. I'm going to remove the screen protector. Yes, people, I am going to remove it. And there is only one problem I'm noticing already is that we're having this residue of the screen protector. Hmm, that is going to be a heck of a job removing this from the screen. All right, so I'm going to peel it off and one hour later, I am done. Mm hmm, it's going to take forever. All right, so let's talk about the tablet itself, the power that is within this machine because it's all freaking magic. And we're going to do some testing with retro and Android games. On the top we're finding the ATMI connection, headphone jack and the microphone. Only at the other side of the top of the tablet we find the volume control and the power switch. And at the right side we're finding the micro SD slot for upgrading the eternal storage. That brings us to the micro USB you can find at the bottom of the device. This is for charging the device and of course data transfer and when grabbing the controller we can just click it in slide it in and play some games but all right let's pull it out and let's see what we're going to get with the tablet itself because this is of course the most important part about it, it doesn't leave any scratches so i'm very glad that it's working very well 
So right, so this small seven inch tablet, the first thing I'm noticing is that it's very responsive. As you can see, it works pretty smooth. It can pre installed with some games. Let's take a close look at the Nvidia store. But of course, because this is a very old Android, it's running on Android 4 and it's basically stuck on this loading screen because nothing happens. The same goes for the PlayStation mobile store. It doesn't do anything because it's giving you an error. I'm guessing it doesn't work with the Wikipad anymore. But the question is, can we still use the Play Store? Yes, it loads. And let's scroll a little bit through it and you can see a little bit of hiccups here and there. So you can already see that the tablet is a little bit old. So for example, Zen Pinball can be installed, but a lot of new games, for example, Run Mario Run doesn't work. And I wanted to try Geekbench 4 and doesn't support the Wikipad anymore. So if you're searching for Mario Run, I know it doesn't show up. So I just wanted to show you over here and a lot of the weird stuff going on. I've noticed that a lot of programs are not compatible with this Android version. And most important is that even if you find a way to get to the page of the program, it doesn't do anything or it just closes like this. And this means that you're just basically very limited to the programs or the apps that you can use on this tablet. And even if it's downloadable, it doesn't say it's going to run because for example, Sonic Dash, it doesn't do anything. You press it and it just freezes from this point on. It doesn't do anything. You hear some music and that's it. So a lot of games are not playable on this tablet anyway because this tablet is not powerful enough to run the games. Yes, even the Sonic Dash is not playable. Bummer. I've managed to find a game that can be installed and can be played. It runs really choppy so it already recommended when powering on the system that you need to go to the video settings put everything on off or low quality, otherwise the game will not run correctly. All right, that's what we're going to do. So let's check out how it's going to run. The loading screens take forever. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, it starts the game. So all right, let's play some Zin Pinball on this tablet. Very curious how it's going to run. But the weirdest part is with this game, Pay attention to the gameplay. You can see it runs not like it should be. Sometimes we're having this more like frame drapes that it freezes for a second. Freaking annoying. Okay, let's use some under gaming angles. And let's see how we can play this game in different ways. All right, so let's play the game in vertical mode. Ooh, this looks pretty cool. It looks really nice. Alright, so let's play a little bit and for the next test we are going to use the controller because I'm very curious how this is going to work. But it's very nice with the triggers. We can use the L and R or you can just basically use the trigger buttons. Pretty cool. I can already tell you if you want to play some game on this thing, I have small hands. This is going to be a problem because this controller is freaking clunky. It's very huge. Look more like the Duke controller of the old school Xbox if you're familiar with it. Yes, it's big, it's huge, it's gigantic. But still, I think it's pretty comfortable. Shall we play some other games with the controller? Like a shooter that was pre-installed on the device. I noticed that these sticks are very loose. You really need to get used to them, but it's quite nice. This is how it needs to be played, not with touchpad. And then I think that is really cool about the wiki pad that you can just basically use this controller. So there are no way to do bend mark, so I'm just going to show you some specifications. This thing has one gigabyte installed, so it's not very much. And uh, so let's take a close look at the, the CPU because I'm very curious what it runs this thing. So we have the ARM Gore-Tex A9 that is running on 300 megahertz. And there's always having a quad core. NVIDIA Tegra 3, it's a very old one, but still it's quite powerful. And here's some information about the screen. And this is a refresh rate of 60 hertz, so it's pretty nice. I've managed to install and to update the YouTube app, so if you want to browse the YouTube, it's possible. So let's do a little bit of testing. Okay, let's choose the search. I think 
this tablet's very responsive. All right, so let's scroll a little bit. What you can see, it needs some time, a couple of seconds to load up. Um, but in general, the scrolling itself works pretty really fine. All right, so let's watch a video and check out the sound and the video quality. So that brings us to retro gaming. We can use RetroArch, it's still downloadable through the store. You need to have a little bit of knowledge how to reconfigure. If you want to have the easy mode, you can always use Classic Boy, for example. We can use Classic Boy or separate emulators. So Classic Boy is more like an all-one package that supports different platforms like N64, PlayStation 1, Game Boy, NES, Sega, and Neo Geo Arcade. Limited, but it's pretty easy to use. All right, so we're going to play some retro games. I'm going to test it out here on the system. So enjoy the show, grab yourself a cup of tea, and let's see how they are running. So the question remains, what do we need to do with the Wikipad? Because it's a pretty damn old Android version, so that brings a lot of limitations if you look at the store. I have really no clue how long I can use it for, let's say, YouTube and browsing the internet. So in overall, I think it's more like a good way to play some retro gaming. So there are some, still some Android games running on this device, but only the older versions. So the Wikipad, this is what you're going to get. I will leave a link in the description where you can find it. I think it's a pretty cool device um, if you want to play some retro gaming. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell, and if you're into gaming, don't forget to check out the gaming channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.